Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Once again, we are covering news that occurred over a month ago, uh, just this week or over the past weekend. I finally got to the Blood Rose Dragon announcement, Aki's Black Rose getting an upgrade. Uh, we are finally getting to another cool announcement and reveal that occurred in the month of January, and usually I do take January off when it comes to videos, so I still have a pretty decent backlog of stuff that I want to get to, uh, including all of the new At Ignister cards. Now, these cards are all really, really cool because most of them are direct references from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains anime. So I'm not going to really go over these cards. If you've watched my channel, you probably are already familiar with this. I don't really go in depth with these cards from any sort of competitive perspective. I just think there are so many great and amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! Tubers out there that do a much better job with that. But I do like to go over different references and nuances and Easter eggs that the cards could be alluding to when it comes to the actual anime. And I think a lot of people who watch me are probably familiar with the anime or watch me to maybe stay informed on the anime. And so maybe there's some references with these new Ignister cards that you don't even pick up on because maybe you just didn't watch Vrains, which is completely okay. So these cards are coming out in Lightning Overdrive. It's the same set that Aki's new Blood Rose Dragon will be coming out in. It was released in January in the OCG over in Japan and I believe it will be released early June in the TCG so definitely uh, really cool stuff to look forward to in June but let's get to it a lot of these cards by the way are uh, spell and trap cards I think we only got one monster if I'm not mistaken but we'll just start with the first spell when I first met you and I think it's pretty again all of these card names or almost all of the card names with I and the at Ignister uh, especially the spell and trap support are going to be puns obviously if you're not familiar which I'd be surprised if any of you are not uh, the character's name is I uh, AI, but they called him I in the show, so it's obviously very easy to make puns with his name. Uh, and the first spell when I first met you, I think it's cool that this is the first spell that was revealed because you know it, it's a callback to when I and Playmaker first met. Actually, it's the exact moment I would imagine when I came out of Yusaku's dual desk uh, and Yusaku kind of trapped him in that dual desk. Uh, you can see him kind of standing on top of a dual desk, and based on the card's name, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is a reference to the first time that I and Yusaku met. And this is the first card we get, and keep that in mind because the last card that gets revealed is almost the, the last time that they ever see each other, so love the symbolism there. But before we get to that, we have our only Cybers Link monster that we got in this reveal, and that is Dark Infant at Ignister. So a cool little uh, card there. We've seen baby Stardust in yesterday's video. You know, you had baby Firewall with Security Dragon, and now you have baby Dark Templar at Ignister. That's definitely what it's uh, supposed to be. But you have Dark Infant at Ignister. Uh, so there's your Link monster. The next spell you have is You and I. Uh, and this is kind of a, a another fun one uh, where you have I riding Link Karibo. Uh, and that was a scene that occurred a few times throughout Vrains, uh, especially whenever I would go back to the Cybers world, or we had flashbacks to when he was back in the Cybers world, which was his hometown or his homeland in the show, uh, in the Vrains universe. He would almost always be riding Link Karibo. He had a very close relationship with Link Karibo, and so it is really cool that in this artwork, he's riding Link Karibo, he's pointing forward, and he's controlling, I believe that's Dark Templar, I don't think it's Decode Talker, I believe it's Dark Templar on the card art, uh, which makes sense because obviously that was, either way it makes sense because again, those cards are very symbolic of I, even if you say, well Decode Talker was more Playmaker, which it absolutely was, remember, Playmaker got that deck from I and from the Cybers, and the Cybers was, you know, created with the help of I. So he's related to all of these sort of Cybers monsters. And even the effect if a Cybers monster with 2300 attack is special summoned, uh, and that speaks right to Dark Templar or Decode Talker. In fact, a lot of these cards have that effect where you have to summon um, 2300 attack monster or activate the effect of a 2300 attack monster or reveal a 2300 attack monster in your extra deck 
Uh, there's a lot of effects like that. So, of course, these cards are all playing around Dark Templar at Ignister, which has 2300 attack, and Decode Talker, which also has 2300 attack. So, I think that's very cool that you need to utilize those cards. Those cards are always going to be the main staple of any sort of at Ignister decks that you create. I'm actually wrong. We do have another monster, uh, and it's Don Mari at Ignister, and the artwork here is amazing. There was a scene in Episode 3 when Playmaker beat the generic Knight of Hanoi. It was at the very beginning where I turns into this really creepy, disgusting, terrifying tentacle beast, and he tries to eat the Knight of Hanoi. Actually, I believe he does eat the Knight of Hanoi before the Knight of Hanoi sets a bomb off. And that is exactly what this card artwork is referencing. It's referencing Eye's form in that episode. I also believe that he went into this form in another episode, though I can't remember the circumstances, but I definitely remember him going into that form after the first duel of the show. So that's a really cool callback there. Uh, just to go over the effect really quickly, you can only use each of this card name's first and second effects once per turn. When an attack is declared involving your Ad Ignister monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, negate the attack. And then if you control a Link 6 monster... You can banish this card from your field or grave, then target one face-up card your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn. So it seems like an alright monster. I mean, it doesn't seem too crazy to me. Uh, I think the first effect, I feel, is a little better than the second effect. Obviously, for that second effect to go off, you have to have that big boss Link 6 monster on the field, which I'm not too sure how easy it is to get that monster out in the Ignister deck, but it seems like a, a pretty okay card. Uh, my favorite card though from this entire set, remember the first one started with when I first met you. Uh, this one is called Mono Imano, which again, Mono Imano, a uh, great name and this is one of the last times that I and Playmaker ever see each other. And if you never watched Vrains, you never pick up on the what this card's truly symbolizing. Uh, and it shows I holding a sword in his Ignis form, sticking his hand out with, obviously, uh, a very shadowy playmaker in the background of this card, and this is 100% in reference to the last duel of the show. I believe it was the last episode, although I'm not 100% sure about that, but it was definitely the last duel of the show, where I is sticking his hand out as a human to Playmaker, asking Playmaker to join him, uh, and Playmaker obviously refuses and goes on to defeat I and ultimately kill his best friend, kill his partner of the show, uh, and this was one of the scenes that took place right before I's eventual death. So, looking at this card from someone who has, you know, seen Vrains, I think anyone who has watched Vrains will probably look at this card and say, wow, that is... That is awesome. Uh, the only big difference there being the fact that it's I as an Ignis and not I as a human. And I almost think that that makes this card artwork a little more heartbreaking because when I was an Ignis, that's when him and Playmaker were at their, you know, closest. It wasn't until I became a human or took on the form of a human that he became more evil and basically hell-bent on either destroying the world or having Playmaker destroy him. Uh, that was obviously the ultimatum that Playmaker had to come to terms with, and obviously Playmaker chose to destroy him. Uh, but as an Ignis, in that form, I was really never a threat to this world. It wasn't until all of his, you know, Ignis friends and sisters and brothers died, and he got pushed to the point of no return in terms of going down the path that he went down. So seeing him as an Ignis reaching out to Playmaker right before we know his fans, Playmaker finishes him off, uh, makes this scene really, really sad. I'm not sure what the sword symbolizes. It might symbolize the sword of uh, Dark Templar or Decode Talker. Uh, the sword is kind of interesting there because as a human, or even as an Ignis, I never really carried around a sword. So I, I don't really fully understand the symbolism unless it's just supposed to be a decode talker or dark templar sword but if you guys have any theories on that let me know as for the effect it is a continuous trap so it stays on the field but you can only use this card name's third effect once per turn and the third effect is when your at ignister monster is destroyed by battle you can target one cybers monster with 2300 attack in your grave accept the destroyed monster special summon it 
first effect, monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack for each card you control. And then the second effect, if you're at Ignister Monster Battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. So that actually... I mean, I know in Duel Links, that's a, a pretty good effect to have. I don't know in the actual TCG if that's a, a solid effect, but it locks your opponent out of doing anything while you're at Ignister Monster is attacking. So it seems like a pretty good effect, but, you know, I, I, I really don't know. Uh, you guys let me know all your thoughts on the at Ignister cards and support that we got in January. I'm really excited to hear from all of you. And let me know if the at Ignister deck is fun to play with, if it's a good deck, if these cards make it a little more competitively viable, um, because that's probably my favorite part about making card videos like this. I love going over all this anime stuff and all the anime references. I feel like that's more so my specialty and really just what I enjoy doing more. But I really do love hearing, you know, whether these effects are good, whether these cards are good. You gave me great insight on the Stardust support we got yesterday, and you gave me really good insight on Blood Rose Dragon and all the Rose cards. So I'm really looking forward to your analysis of these cards. Cards, and hopefully you enjoyed all of my, you know, nerdy anime references that these cards hold as well. Thank you to everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And a special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patrons, Horace May, Goosey Q, Panther J, Blue Maiden 28, Jarrett Bueller, and Aura Dragon, and to my Diamond Tier Patrons, Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, and Anime Kaput, and to my Egyptian God Tier Patrons, XZ's Lover 104, Pegasus Seiya, and Stella Sky. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and who is a YouTube channel member. You guys help me out tremendously. Would not be able to do this without all of you. And thank you to everyone who just watches my videos because without all of you, well, I definitely would not be able to do this. I stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash superdeeprot. You can check that out in the description. Uh, and until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.